Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Scott, and today we're going to be painting the Striker Heavy Warjack, which is one of the new models coming out alongside the new edition of War Machine. Very excited to dive into this model, so let's go ahead and see how I painted it. Now to prepare this model for painting, I've primed it using Ultra Matte Black Paint Plus Primer from Rust-Oleum. To start this project off, we're going to base most of the model using Lead Belcher. Anything that isn't an armor panel is going to get painted in this color. With that lead belcher base in place, we're going to shade the model using Agrax Earthshade. And you can go as heavy as you'd like with this. It will just make your model look a bit more dirty and darker. Once we've allowed that shade to dry, we're going to take Iron Breaker and we're going to do a heavy dry brush all over the metal parts of the model. From there, we're going to take Stormhose Silver and we're going to do a second layer of dry brushing, but this time it's a lighter dry brush. We're only focusing on catching the most raised ridges and edges on the model. There are a series of tubes and cables on the model, and we're going to pick those out using Cycorax Bronze. And just be careful not to get this on the silver that we've just painted in the previous few steps. Now we're going to take Seraphim Sepia and we're going to use this for two different purposes. We're going to shade this on the cables that we painted in the last step. And then we're also going to put this anywhere that there is a moving part on the model to give the appearance of oil stains. Now that we're done with the mechanical parts of the model, we're going to take Signar Blue Base and we're going to use this to paint all of the panels that we want to be blue on the model. To shade the blue, we're going to take Drakenhof Nightshade, and we're going to just do a pin wash with this, meaning that we are only painting this where we want the shade to go. So in the recesses and on any of the rivets on the model, anywhere we want it to appear a little bit darker blue. Once we're happy with the shading, we're going to take Signar Blue Highlight, we're going to water this down a little bit and use it as a glaze, and put this in the center of all the armor panels, so that we get the appearance of the armor being lighter towards the center and darker towards the edges. Now that we're done with the blue armor, we're going to begin working on the white, and we're going to start by basing all the panels we want to be white using Administratum Gray. Once we have that base color in place, we're going to take Seraphim Sepia, and we're going to use this to wash all the panels, but we are going to water this down, and what that's going to do for us is it's going to make it so that the wash is thinner and runs into the crevices and doesn't deposit on the flat surfaces of the armor. Once that shade is dried, we're going to take Gray Seer and we're going to do the same thing we did with the blue highlight before. We're going to layer this over the center of each of the white armor panels. Now that we're done with the white armor, it's time to move on to the parts we want to do with gold. And we're going to start by basing those parts using Retributor Armor. To shade all of the gold parts, we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade, and this is going to give the gold a somewhat more red-orange tint than it already has. Once our shade is dried, we're going to take Gehenna's Gold, and we're going to layer this back over the flat surfaces of the panels. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring back the pearlescent effect of the gold paint. Our next step on the gold is to take Stormhost Silver, and we're going to be edge highlighting all of the parts we did with gold. And this just gives us a bit of contrast to the gold, and helps us bring out the details in the gold panels. Once we've finished with that, we're going to take Balthazar Gold, and we're going to paint this on all of the grates and panels that have the holes in them, as well as all the decorative parts and the trim that are on the mechanical parts of the model. We're going to use Agrax Earthshade as the wash for all the copper panels on the model. And you can go as heavy as you'd like, although it will make your copper panels appear a lot more dirty. Once that shade is dried, we're going to take Cycorax Bronze, and we're going to use this to edge highlight all of the copper parts on the model.
just for fun, I decided I want to do something a little bit different with one of the knee pads. So I'm going to base it using Averlin Sunset. Once we're happy with the yellow, we're going to take Mephiston Red and we're going to do a checker pattern on the knee pad by first drawing horizontal and vertical lines on the model, and then we fill in alternating squares to give the appearance of checkers. Now chances are your checkers are going to be a little sloppy at first, so we'll go back through with Averlin Sunset and we will touch up all the yellow squares, and this is a back and forth process. You might have to use the yellow and the red colors multiple times until you're happy with the squares. Our next step is to take Wraithbone, and we're going to paint this on all of the electric coils on the back of the model and on any of the weapons that the model comes with. We're then going to take Contrast Talazar Blue, and we're going to shade this all over the white coils. And I do water this down just a little bit so that the coils on the most raised surfaces stay a little bit more white. As we get close to the end of this project, we're going to take Basiliconum Gray Contrast Paint and we're going to put this in all of the vents and holes that are on the model. And this is just to darken those in a little bit more than the shade has already done. Our final step in this project is to take Lead Belcher again and we're going to go back through and we're going to paint all of the rivets on the model and then clean up any spots where we overpainted or any details that we missed that should have been done in Lead Belcher in the past. And with that, we finished painting the Striker Heavy Warjack. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, go ahead and like it, and then subscribe to my channel so you can see future videos I make. And then, go ahead and hit the join button and become a member of the channel. Your support goes a long way to making sure that I can make more videos. As always, have an amazing day, and we'll catch you in the next one.